Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the What Lad Podcast. There's only two more episodes left of season three, and what a season it has been. As always, thanks for all the support, the shares, the messages, or just spreading the word. It's been awesome to see where this podcast has gone, and we're so big now that we've even got Hayden from EQS, who is one of the best registered quantity surveyors on the planet. He's on board. So if you're looking to build renovate your existing home or looking at a commercial development, make sure you look no further than the lad Hayden. EQS is based in Palmerston North, but they work throughout New Zealand and they can provide estimates from concept plans through to the final design. If you're interested, make sure you contact Hayden and all the information on how to contact him is in the description below. And also, what's a what lad episode without a few words from the champion lad, Tim Bateman? G'day guys, Tim Bateman here from O Studio. If you're trying to get some more control over your own time and money, and therefore looking to open your own business, O Studio might just be the option for you. We really are the one-stop shop for all things well-being. We're much like a gym really, in terms of a financial model, but instead of fitness sessions, we offer sauna sessions, ice baths, flotation therapy, massage, yoga, pilates, meditation, and a recovery space with tools like Normatex. Look, Wellbeing is a $4.1 trillion industry worldwide, and we've found a model that works, so the key for us now is finding the right people to join the journey. If you're interested, fill in your details at ostudio.co.nz forward slash lad, and I'll get in touch. Back to the show. Ah, what a lad. Well, when it comes to exciting rugby talents, they do not come much bigger than today's guest, as I'm joined by arguably the most talented young rugby player in the game right now. He was a schoolboy star for Hamilton Boys, and he's just off the back of a special season with the Tasman Marco and the New Zealand Under-20, and now at just 19 years old, he's signed a three-year deal with the Crusaders. And of course, like all my guests are, he is an absolute lad. He's one of the greats. It is Noah Hotham. Welcome, mate. Thanks, Jabba. Thanks for having me. Mate, good to have you on. Um, do like getting on these young, talented guests um, at the start of their career before they blow up, and that's where you're sitting right now. Yeah, exciting, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> mate, but when I do get young guests on, often what happens is they fly through the start of their career and we get to the, when they're about 19 years old and um, podcast is over and we're about five minutes. So I want to take it a bit slow with you. I'm keen to break it down into smaller segments, so... Um, Give me the rundown for your first five years. Um, so I was um, born and bred in Hamilton. Oh, yeah. So my family moved down from Auckland to Hamilton um, 2003 when I was born. Um, brought up there um, just across the road from the Waikato River, the mighty True. Waikato River where the Waikato draft comes from. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, real grateful for my upbringing, I guess. I wouldn't say like we weren't poor we weren't rich we're kind of just like in that middle perfect yeah and met met a lot of um diverse like hang out with so many diverse just families like Mm. some of my mates were like a bit well off some might have been like not well off and Mm. it was just a real good balance to give me good perspective in life i guess so yeah started off went to woodstock primary school that was my first school yeah which was just up the road like a Two two minute walk from my house. Mm. Used to walk there like every day with my um, siblings, barefoot. How many siblings you got? I'm the youngest of five, so I got two it's older true. brothers and two older sisters. True. And your mum and dad? Yeah, they're both teachers. So oh. my my mum teaches at a school called Saint Joseph's, which is just the fence between the primary school that I went to, Woodstock, oh, and yeah. then there's Saint Joseph's, which is like the opposite, where we like used to have like little rocks throwing <laughs> against each other and whatnot. Yeah, so she teaches new entrants there. What's it like having two parents as teachers? Uh, good and bad, I guess. <laughs> Probably more now once I like look back at it, um, more good than bad. But back when I was at school, you know, I can't really get away with too much. Yeah. Yeah, because they're always just like, oh, do your best. Uh, yeah. all, the, all the standard just like don't do subjects that are too easy and too boring. Mm. Making sure like I can't really skip too much school. I had to go to school like every day mm. here and there um so just yeah grateful for those things now but back then i was like damn mm. can i just be like the other <laughs> it's paid off now though because you're yeah. pretty academic eh? oh i wouldn't say too academic, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> here and there. And what about footy? Had you started playing footy before you were five? Um, no, nah, no. Nah, I start, I actually played soccer all the way up to intermediate. I played, yeah, I called it soccer. I was just muck around, to be honest. Mm. Um, just for my school team um, with a few mates and whatnot. And then because my brother's supposed to play footy, supposed to play rugby, and my dad has coached rugby for a while, so that all just take the piss out of me and call me a pussy and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually um, played rugby at Intermediate for Club Marist up in Hamilton with heaps of my good mates that are still my mates now. Yeah, so I started playing rugby at Year 7 and when I was younger just played soccer, did swimming um, and athletics and touch. True. Yeah, pretty much those. What was your favourite? You were pretty good at touch, eh? Yeah, I've... Well, my family's kind of just like born and bred touch, pretty much. Um, my mum played like rep touch for Samoa in New Zealand. My dad played open men's for New Zealand. Oh, true. Yeah, my older brother's in open men's for New Zealand. Currently? Um, yeah, oh, well, they're kind of in like segments, like, because they'll have a squad for the World Cup. He was in the last World Cup, oh, though, yeah. but lost to Australia. Um, and everyone just kind of played touch. I kind of just grew up playing touch, I guess. Mm. Yeah, so that's also kind of what got me into rugby. So how old were you when you got into rugby? I don't know, maybe, I'd like to say maybe 10. Oh, yeah. And when you made that switch, you were yeah. like, you were into it, eh? Like, well, it's kind of good because I'm like, I'm young for my year group. Oh, yeah. So like, I was, the people in my year group were playing, say like 12th grade when I was playing 11th grade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that kind of gave me a little bit because I was a little bit bigger and tubbier than everyone else. True, were you a tubby kid? Yeah, I, when I was a little kid, I, my brothers and sisters call, still call me like fat boy. Do they? Yeah, I, oh, I, used, I used to. Nah, but I used to like it because I used to like. I, I thought just like being fat was kind of like fun and like cute. Yeah, yeah, cute. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be. Um, what do they call a sumo wrestler? Oh, did you? Yeah. What when you were little? Yeah. True. Just because I love eating like love yeah. food. So what stopped you chasing your real dream? (laughs) (laughs) Once you start to get mocked by everyone. (laughs) Once it's not as cute. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, true. So when you did switch to rugby, by all accounts, mate, you were like training the house down from the age of about 10, um, full-on program, um, Uh, squatting, doing all the the training. Well, because my dad... When my family moved from Auckland to Hamilton, he was at Calston Boys High oh, coaching yeah. um, and then moved to Hamilton for – he's a deputy principal at Hamilton Boys High and also coaches the first of things. So he was there coaching and I'd just be like a little five-year-old, six-year-old running around. like They'd be doing their boot camps and in the gym and whatnot and I'd always just be there pretty much. True. Yeah. And then at intermediate, because my intermediate's literally like across the road from the high school. Yeah. So every day after intermediate, I'd have to wait for dad to catch a ride home. Oh, so I'd yeah. just be in and about first 15, like for years, and go to their boot camps and whatnot. So yeah. Mate, get a um, Ivan Cleary, Nathan Cleary vibe out of that. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging around the Warriors with old man coaches. It's yeah. a little bit like what you were doing. Mm, mm, yeah. It was fun, though. Real fun. But yeah. And when you did give rugby a go, were you? We are good straight away. Obviously, your touch background would have helped. Yeah, I didn't at the start. I didn't really like the yeah, the contact side of it. Yeah. I guess, or just because touch, you're just yeah. running, touching. But were you it. still a big boy? Were you still chubby? Or, or yeah, bad? yeah, not chubby, chubby, but like super um, chubby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I wasn't like the best, but I was all yeah. right, just average kid, I guess. What position did you go? I uh, started off centre fullback. Did you? Yeah, eleven. <laughs> 11th grade, yeah, in Marist. Oh, yeah. cracker. The big yeah. chubby fullback from yeah. the back, off the back fence. Yeah. I used to, um, we used to play like knee rugby on the trampoline at my uh, mate's house down the yeah. road. Um, but they're like, they went to like private school and whatnot, like one of my good mates and mm. whatnot, just like a whole different um, spec. But they used to call me, we used to like make names on the champ. Mine was like the, the big Tongan. <laughs> <laughs> just not even Tongan. <laughs> <laughs> there was one like Mini Hamilton and like Big Tong and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, just yeah. Did you have some um, good rivalries with your siblings? Obviously, being the youngest probably helped. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially yeah, Jasmine, which is so it goes. My oldest sister, twenty seven, then brother, twenty five, 
then another brother, 23, then Jasmine's 21 or 22, and sure. I'm 19. So oh, yeah. me and Jasmine kind of um, hung out the most, I guess, just because we're closer in age. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have kind of good rivalry because she does quite well, I guess. Yeah. And then watching, obviously got to watch both my older brothers play and, like, touch nationals and sevens mm-hmm. and whatnot um, for him and a boy. So, yeah. What age could you start beating Jasmine or you're still not there? <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you remember, like do you remember a year when you just like, finally? This like, year, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, maybe, like, high schoolish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably maybe like mid high schoolish. True. You yeah. just felt depends what in, I guess. Though. Yeah, true. Like, she's pretty quick. Is she faster than you? No, she used to be. Like, oh yeah, ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone still reckons she's faster than me, but no. Nah. nah, you've got it quite a high top end. Um, um, no, oh, not not higher than average around here, but like just <laughs> I'm versing her. They're going to go extra <laughs> five miles an hour. Um, yeah. But used, we used to like have heaps of fights and whatnot. Did yeah. you? What yeah. biffo? Yeah, punching. Yeah, one True. time I got real angry. Um, it was like coming into touch season. We went to like the Essex store, and I must have like had like semi average boots, which is like normal. Mm. But her ones are like fully broken. Like would wear them out until like you can't wear them anymore. Yeah, because they're pretty expensive. Um, and she got these boots, and I was like, no, I really, really want them. I mean, I just had packed the biggest salt. This is when I was, like, at primary school. Yeah. So I locked myself in the car. They were, like, bang on the <laughs> And then she's in the front, and then we're driving home, and she was, like, getting cheeky or something. And then I was, like, just sitting in the back, and I just came around the back. Did you? <laughs> True. <laughs> nah, but she used to get me a few, too. Yeah. Get me in chokeholds all the time. Oh, yeah. Or the typewriter. Do you know what the typewriter no, is? No, what's that one? You hold, like sit on them, hold your hands down, then put your knees on their hands, mm. and then like a typewriter, like type on their chest and slap them. Can't <laughs> 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 do anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Stop, mom. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one if you have a little sibling. Yeah, good times at the Hotham family. Yeah. As a young fella, I, mean, I didn't see you as a someone to get in the red like that. And yeah, I used to be actually seat. a You're little, bit of a psycho, a angry fellow when I was little. I guess yeah. that's still in you, eh? But you just <laughs> learnt to control it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, just got put in my bedroom too much, closed the door. Mm. Has anyone pushed you since you've been in like the pro setup to make you want to crack mm. them or get close? Nah, not really. Nanky? <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I guess nah. You kind of just learn how to how to um, absorb it and take the feedback and whatnot. Yeah. The worst I probably get is just like if I was like bantering with my mates or whatnot. Mm. After a few beers. Yeah, or just like playing video games and just talking shit to yeah, each other. Yeah, winding each other up. Yeah, like one time at school, I'd just finished this assignment, walking to class, like, this is at lunch, printed it out at lunch, walking. My mate thought it would be funny to like spit on it. <laughs> oh, was, that's the closest I think I've ever got to like, I'd literally come around and I just stopped and I was like, Whoa, that is good self control. That was the, that was the closest I've ever got. Otherwise, nah, not really. Yeah, don't really do much. Mate, do much of that. Yeah, look at that. That's good stuff. So when you let's get back to your footy, you made the first fifteen. I think at a world record young age. What was it? No, nah, year twelve. I oh, year, year twelve. 12. Yeah, I oh, yeah, I wasn't that young. And the old man picture. <laughs> yeah. Did you like get a bit a, of stick for that? Eh? Oh, bro, all the time. I always wondered that. Yeah. yeah. Like even like going through year nine because you go through the age grades at like under fourteen a, under fifteen a's, and they're just like, yeah. I oh, know. Wait, oh, yeah, your dad picked you. Oh, true. <laughs> your dad's a deputy principal. That's why. Had, oh, I'd hate it. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Was there any truth to it, or now were you always good enough? Oh, I'd hope not. But mm. <laughs> <laughs> people might say yes and But I hope not. So when did you get good? Like, was it? That sort of year 12 um, Yeah, I guess I was I was always like all right, like top middle-ish, mm. not like anything good, but I guess boys just kind of like drop out throughout the grades, mm. like under 14 to have a team and then guys would just find other things mm. or like start drinking with their mates and whatnot. And then there's like a small group of us that just slowly work our way, second, 15 and then first 15. Mm. But I guess my dad was just really, um, he really just pushed me and my sister, like, even on the weekend, just like, just little annoying ass things, like, why aren't you chaining or whatnot? Yeah. 
if we're eating like something shit, then he's just like, did you in that or not? <laughs> just like little ways, niggly things, you just oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just feel guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Or he'd just take us to the park and there's, yeah, he'd always have the first of Dane training and whatnot, so we'd always, from pretty young, we'd always just be training with them. And Hamilton Boys is like renowned as one of the best first of Dane schools in the country, really, isn't it? So um, that program was pretty... Pretty professional, eh? For yeah, a, for really, a, really professional. Like, for some boys, it'll make them, but for a lot of them, it'll definitely break them. Mm. Yeah, do lots of trainings a week. What's it look like? What's a normal week look like? Um, Is it pretty much professional? Probably more than professional. I'd more say. than professional? <laughs> far out. That's a huge goal. <laughs> <laughs> like, more, more yeah. load, I'd say. Well, because you don't train during the middle of the day because you have school. So, like, say yeah. Monday, you'd wake up. We do conditioning, which is and shuttles in mm. the gym, like hard as like you'd be spewing by the end of it. True, yeah, just because there's it's a big school. There's like two thousand boys at that school. Like if you're not going to push yourself, then you'll you go be in the Colts or something. Yeah, so there's heaps of competition, um, and like heaps of boys from all over the country come there. Um, and then go to school all day and whatnot, and then after school we'd have like um, work ons like an hour and a half an hour a bit just you had to plan like what you're doing mm. insides do this stuff like middies the coaches aren't really there because they um have teaching stuff usually on a monday mm. tuesday then we'd have gym session in the or in the morning so in these mornings these are both like at six in the morning before school yeah before school um so some boys especially if they live well away like waking up at five yeah and then staying until like five in the afternoon right. fast six um tuesday gym session um school we do like big contact in the afternoon mm. wednesday no morning training school and then another session after school and then thursday gym in the morning school and then like captain's run but almost like gst type captain's True. run after school then Friday lunchtime would be in the gym doing our captain's run and then play Saturday. Crazy. Sunday, right. And then conditioning <laughs> on Monday. Did you see heaps of guys um, in your team who were talented footy players who sort of packed it in because it was just too much for them? For sure, for sure. Especially boys like on the verge. Mm. Like maybe they weren't getting picked so many weeks, but you still have to do all that training. Oh, yeah. So I can definitely see how like you'd just be like, oh, no. Fuck. Just broke them. Yeah. Yeah, and if you live further away or if, like, because you're expected to, like, get there. However, like, most boys' parents will take them or yeah. whatnot. So you do have to kind of organise and kind of be self-reliant almost. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. No wonder they're one of the best schools in the country. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty good setup. And then the year 13, that's when you really um, sort of stamped your mark on New Zealand rugby. Um, massive year for you that year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, not really. Do you reckon? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was all right. Just a group <laughs> of boys. Um, but that year 12, I was real gutted because I missed out on the – I wanted to make that Barbarians on the 18th oh, team. Yeah. I didn't make that. And there was some – yeah, um, they selected some other boys, which is all good. Who made it? Uh, I know you held uh, grudges <laughs> on this. <laughs> um, but I made that um, – New Zealand under eighteen Maori team, which is real cool experience. Like, oh, yeah. Never experienced anything like that. It's so like full on um in terms of like learning culture and whatnot. Mm. Um and then we ended up beating the Barbars with this we had a pretty stacked team and then getting like two points or something away from the NZ schools team. Oh true. Yeah. Which was real cool. Was that you and Taha? Was Taha in that group? Because nah. he was in the first 15 with you, eh? Yeah, yeah. But he's a year, it's weird, he's a year younger than me. So when I was year 13, he was year 12. And, but he's older than me. True. Yeah. How does that work? Uh, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we played, yeah, we've played um, all throughout. There's this thing in Hamilton called Gwyn Shield, which is intermediate, like under 75s. Oh, yeah. Did you ever hear of Roller Mills? No. Nah. Sounds good. It's like intermediate tournament under, so from Gwynshield you get picked to Roller Mills like to play for the Waikato team. You versus like Auckland East, North Harbour, Bay of Plenty, just like a young rep thing. Mm. So we played all throughout that, all through intermediate and high school together. All right. So yeah, one of my, yeah. And did you make New Zealand schools after your last year? 
Yeah, yeah, 13 made into its goals, but that was like COVID years oh, yeah. around about. So they just selected a paper team. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. And then the pathway to Tasman. How did you get to Tasman? Oh, you obviously go to Otago first, don't you? You go down there for uni? Was um, well, I was leaving school and I was like, I don't know like what I'm going to do. I just wanted to play rugby. Um, so I was deciding whether to stay in like Hamilton with like the Waikato set up mm. um, and this is when they were just coming in with that new they were talking about like NDCs and whatnot, which is what a super contract national development contract which is like uh, with yes. a super team is it yeah they brought those in this year oh yeah 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 but they were having talks about that back then so yeah 13 I was deciding pretty much whether I stay in Hamilton with Waikato and like have like some time in with the Chiefs and mm-hmm. like it. Um, or I wanted to go down to Dunedin because all my siblings studied in Dunedin. Oh, yeah. My oldest sister, she studied law um, down there, and Legion, my oldest brother, studied dentistry. He's a dentist now. And my other brother studied physio down there, so he's a physio now. True. All yeah. academic. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so they all went down there and they loved the day. And yeah. we went down there a few times just um, for their graduations and whatnot. Yeah. And it was just, it just looked hissing. And <laughs> 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 it looked hissing. So I was like, wow, I kind of want to go down and experience like life yeah. somewhere else, meet new people and whatnot. Yeah. Also wanted to play rugby. And it just ended up that Highlanders had some connection with Tasman, I think through coaches and whatnot. Mm. So Otago didn't have a spot for me. They just had an academy spot. So I was like, oh, I don't know. Better than that, jeez. Not better <laughs> than that. I was just like, I don't think they had something in the future either, which was like, yeah. I just wanted a bit of security, I guess, yeah. compared to like staying at home where Waikato had something for me. Mm. Um, and then Tasman jumped in with the Highlanders, I think. Mm. Oh, yeah, I just kind of weighed that up and I was like, if I stay at home, I'll probably just regret it. So I ended up leaving to Dunners and studied. And uh, me and my other good mate, um, the big Dutchman, Fabian. Oh, big Fabian yeah. Holland. Yeah, he kind of did the same thing, came from um, Christchurch. though. Um, so I went into the halls down there and then they kind of had, it was Pretty much just me and Fabian was like the Highlanders Academy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, pretty, it was pretty cool. It was so cool, actually. Yeah, real cool. So we were kind of like integrated in and out of things. Um, and then studied student life like in the hall, met heaps of new people. Mm. Um, and then halfway through the year, I was on a development contract with Tasman. So I went there, went to Tasman for a bit. But they were, they were real good, like lenient or like, you got uni so like mm. if I wasn't playing or something I could come back yeah do study <laughs> study <laughs> do some study and then go back to Tasmania and like go back and forth yeah. which is yeah which is real good and what is the uh, uni life like these days obviously we've had guys like Brad Weber who um, spoke very highly of his time at Dunedin as well like just the ability to live your life a little bit before you uh, yeah. get stuck into the it's, rugby it's career. It's actually so hissing, eh? Like, mm. so hissing. When you're there, you're probably not enjoying it as much as when you leave. You When you leave, you're like, oh, that, that was, was, that was, that yeah. was hectic. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, like, too much amongst it because, obviously, rugby. So we lived, um, hung out with a good group of mates. We would just go here and there, you know. Mm. Um, but it was so good. Just met, You kind of just meet... People from like all walks of life, mm. like they like Invercargill and like Omaru and like just random ass places. <laughs> that you just like, I'd I'd never meet you if I didn't go down to the hall and yeah. just like mingle. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty mad. And how hard was it to stay focused on the footy down there? Obviously, you're getting pulled in every direction. Um, all your mates are probably on the piss. How hard was it for you to keep training, which you obviously did? Um, it wasn't too bad, I guess. Yeah, who you hang around, um, kind of helps that mm. so lots of my friends down there were doing footy as well so um if we'd have trainings and whatnot like the under 20 setup they'd purposely like put the most training like during a week oh yeah which is real niggly so like <laughs> you kind of even have to like piss up and front up or you pretty much get dropped or just don't piss up at all so mm. or just like pick which nights you're going out mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Which one did you do? A bit of both. Experimented yeah. here and there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I, first year I was I was pretty good. Like I didn't drink that much yeah. here and there. Um, especially when I had footy on, just left it because I was like leaving all my family. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to go down to Dunners and then like come back and um. Blow on this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this big, <laughs> so this no big man again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was like real, um, kind of paranoid that like, I don't want to leave and yeah, um, have thrown everything away because like, my parents obviously brought me up like that. So mm. kind of want to, um, yeah, just like do my best for everyone that supported me almost. Mm. So my first year I wasn't too bad, and then this year I was kind of like. Um, let my hair down a little bit more, which was real good. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find going up to Tasman? Um, obviously, another new city for you, um, new life, into a professional environment as well this time. So, how was that for you? It was main, eh? real good. It's either like really sunny there or real rainy, but when it's sunny, it's hizzy. Mm. Um, good group of boys, too. Like, there's heaps of boys, I guess, that aren't from there. And then there's um, a group of them that are from there. So, it's like everyone kind of just. It's not big like Hamilton or like Christchurch or mm. something. So everyone's like pretty much forced to. If you're not hanging out with the rugby boys, like there's not many other people to <laughs> hang out with. <laughs> so you're kind of just living with them. Everything you do is based around there. Yeah. And the coaches and whatnot, the whole setup was real good. Oh, good words. <laughs> <laughs> and um, obviously, playing wise, um, you were young. What were you, 18? Into that environment, um. yeah, yeah, came in young on a development contract, so I wasn't sure if I was even going to stay for the season or whatnot. I mm. was only in for a few weeks, and then just ended up. Um, Andrew Goodman was the coach, and he was he's a top fella. Mm. Um, just ended up training, and I was just yeah, really wanted to have a crack, and he just yeah said I'll keep you around for a bit, so then just stayed there a bit longer. And just I didn't yeah I didn't play much I guess the whole first season um, just train train setting up the playing team and then um, one of those non competition games gave me mm. gave me a crack and then gave me another crack which is main especially like just um, since I'm new and mm. whatnot like some coaches wouldn't do that but I guess just because yeah trained and he saw that almost. Mm. And if I flip that over, one thing I noticed, like obviously when guys come into environments when they're 18 years old, they're obviously um, a little bit standoffish, um, don't quite feel like they're ready, but you never felt like that, eh? You always thought you were ready, you felt like you were good enough pretty much as soon as you arrived. There was definitely heaps of moments where I was like, you probably don't see it, but it was, you do kind of get like here and there and or especially on like big training days where there's a lot of like rugby based stuff mm. yeah I was pretty confident in terms of like the whole setup just from school like mm. around what you do with your trainings and whatnot. yeah um, and just your routine and how you go about your way mm. um, yeah and um, lots of young boys there too which which helped mm. yeah I, I just remember Goody coming back into the room saying that you'd squared him up about <laughs> um, giving him a start or giving you an opportunity and you you don't often hear that from young kids going into environments uh telling their coach that they're ready um they often sit back but um just it was awesome to hear that confidence that you had and then when you got that opportunity you went out there and delivered and i think you even played in the final way eh? like that's yeah, how, that's yeah, how you quickly got, like, you grew five minutes which is like so so cool for me especially because the final was back home yeah. i was like well, i was mind blown and then seeing all my family and friends after it was like yeah a full circle moment but i was it was a big thing that my dad and um, the coaching staff were about. Like, if their parents go crying to the coaching staff, then he's just going to be like, "Well, you're probably still not going to play." Like, yeah. Um, taught lots of the boys in the first thirteen around. Like, if just there yeah, that self reliance type thing. Like, mm. if you got a problem, then you talk face to face. Or mm. if you got any questions, talk face to face. Like, your parents are there to like support you at home, but within the rugby circle, it's not their job really. Mm. Right, yeah. I love that. Yeah, so I was yeah really grateful for it too because like um, when Richie McCall came in um, to do some Q and A's, he was talking about that with Steve Hansen. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, if you're not sure, then um, you like just go up to the coach. Like, I've got, I think I need to work on this, this, and this. Um, do you agree? Like, what mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. do I need to do? 
Yeah. Mate, you're a so, true crusader <laughs> talking to Richie McCall. What a legend. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't talking to him. I was listening. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. And then from there, you made New Zealand under 20s. Um, a year young, too. Eh? You've got another year in it, have you? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, through the super under 20s, yeah, with the Highlanders. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's a, that was a real cool initiative, too. Real cool tournament, mm. real fun. Yeah. And then. Um, was lucky enough to get selected for the NZ under twenties, and by under twenties you've kind of like played against heaps of boys and played with heaps of boys. So mm. like when you have that group, you already know like seventy five percent of them. Um, so we had a real cool tour over in Aussie. What did you learn? Because um, Scotty Hanson was our assistant coach yeah. there, but he was he's real switch on mate. Like mm. just like direct, and he's a good balance around being direct and getting what he wants but also like supporting you i guess mm. and anyone else always um love hearing about other talented kids anyone else really stand out for you on that team because obviously yeah. oh, they're all pretty heaps. Good, yeah. that team was like crazy that's why it's so exciting playing for those teams because it's like you give the ball to anyone and mm. it's like holy like there's a try at the other end um yeah boys like like peter lucker he's oh, crazy yeah, yeah. Um, Wallace, Satiti, like Maka, um, there's so many. Like the whole team's just like stacked. crazy, yeah, so stacked. And then from there you go back to Tasman. Um, this year you pretty much you get your starting spot from the start, was it? Uh not really. Like Louis, um, Louis Chapman had been there for a few years. Top mm. bloke, he's been there for a few years and real good mate of mine, which has been good. Like he's taught me so much, and we just go back and forth, I guess, at mm. the start. And got dropped a few games just for, uh, not for anything in particular, but just because Louis was probably a better, a better fit for some games. Mm. Um, but then, yeah, just kept grinding away, I guess, and yeah, scored a lot of tries. Oh, okay. yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Some <laughs> some tinny ones that I guess most halfbacks get just from supporting. Yeah, yeah, but. Didn't think I was going to get that many, actually. Yeah, how many was it in the end? Seven or? Yes. You were one of the top in the comp, weren't you? Nah, I don't know. I know the so boys s- give you a hard time about not <laughs> passing it. <laughs> um, seven, I think. Sure, yeah. oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a big tally chart on nah, you all. You know nah, exactly how many. Nah, <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, and especially like when you see um, ex boys like. Um, Finlay Christie and like Will Jordan and David Havili and Seven or them because mm. they always um, put their fin up after mm. and then once you score a try and you put your fin up you're like oh. yeah just feel, feel real good eh? mm. so then post that season talk to me about probably the biggest decision of your life today I'm sure every, <laughs> every super rugby team in the country was probably chasing you um, how did you get to the Crusaders um, well, not every Super Rugby team, I guess, has a place for halfbacks. Yeah. Um, so I was, yeah, had to decide whether to stay in Dunedin or come up here and Brent Hall ended up going to Japan and Highlanders had Aaron Smith and Falau and still a few younger boys, so I kind of had to weigh up, like, do I stay in Dunedin, like, best place ever um, and real good setup. Or, like, come here unfamiliar, but chances of playing are probably a bit high, seeing as I'd be like, well, they pick three halfbacks, whereas down mm. in Dunedin they have still a few young boys that are mm. still there. Mm. Um, yeah, so I kind of had to make that decision, which was so hard. Like, Yeah. So hard. It's always stressful way making these decisions. Yeah, you know how much sort of relies on it, or you don't yeah. really know how it's all going to play out. But um, what was the deciding factor on it? Yeah. Well, that was kind of it. It was like I was always pretty like I was like, oh, I want to stay. I do want, like these guys have pretty much given me everything out of mm. school, like helped me so much, made all my friends down there and whatnot. But then I was kind of yeah thinking around like Aaron Smith, he's top in the world, I'd, which is real cool to learn from him and Falau. And Falau was still young. They had I don't think they'd named the All Blacks by then. Mm. Um, so that was that was a big factor in it around those two, like Flowers probably going to be there for quite a bit. Yeah, and here they had a spot, and like you'd have to say the best club in the world in mm. terms of success and track record. Um, so it was kind of that. I was like, do I leave everything and maybe 
have a bit of crack here or stay there and like, mm. yeah. So that was pretty much the deciding factor. Mm. And how do you see your competition with obviously Willie Hines and Mitch Drummond, uh, all very different halfbacks, but um, obviously very highly experienced and you, you, you had something a little bit different. I'm, I'm real keen to learn off them, mate. Yeah, mm. as you said, like they're way different to um, like every, all the halfbacks are different, but I definitely have heaps of wisdom that you mm. can pick off. Um, and just if you kind of yeah, take pieces of the pie of different halfbacks and then make your own pie, mm. just kind of what I would want to do. And um, yeah, I guess they have lots of areas that I, my weaknesses is probably their strengths, mm. which would be good. Yeah. What does your pie look like? <laughs> um, growing up, actually, Augustine Pulley was my favourite after like my favourite pull- player. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So I, I did like a presentation on him when I was younger. Did you? Yeah. Oh, right. I, a, I don't know. Yeah, he's just well, he's kind of like a loose forward. Yeah. No, he was man. Yeah, just smokes people. Yeah. Like runs it all the time. It's yeah. Probably not the best pass or kick, but then. Yeah, so he was my favourite, and then obviously I wanted to go down to Dunedin because I wanted to learn off Falau and Aaron Smith, who are like the best. So, yeah, pieces out of their, their pies, I guess. What did you take from their pie? Or Loving the pie now that you do, by the way. Aaron's like passing, his passing is crazy. Like, I've never way. seen anyone pass like that. Yeah. Like, even just in training, he's just just the way he like the ball and the spin everything about it is just crazy how does he do it what's the, what is the secret I wish I knew <laughs> I wish I knew yeah. I don't know I guess it's he just didn't pass it on <laughs> he didn't pass on the pot oh he did give me little tips here and there but yeah. um, just I guess how much he practices and like the purpose behind when Rich. he practices yeah mm. making like perfect practice um, and then Falau is just running and like he's just one of those guys that like you put him at um, full back for the opposition team yeah. he's going to cut you up you put him at seven he's going to like yeah. go full on and like smoke someone and cut yeah. you up he'll like whack the whole team just stuff like that those razzle play, one, yeah, yeah. yeah. so he was yeah he's a good mate of mine too like top fella um, so he was real cool to learn off to and so easy to talk to Hey, you've been to a fair few environments you've learned off a lot of different nines like I think <laughs> like Finlay Christ Aaron Smith Falao Fakatava Louis Chapman now Willie Hines and Mitch Drummond, you've got a lot of um, a lot of people that you've been able to learn from, and you're only what 19 years old, so it's pretty cool. Eh? Yeah, so cool. And even like looking up to um, Cortez Ratama and Xavier O because mm. they both went to him when the boys before me. Oh, true. So yeah, that was real cool too. That was also kind of another reason why I came down south rather than staying because those two had kind of cemented their spot in in the teams. So were they the two years above you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year 12. Cortez is two years older than me, I think, and then Xavier's two years older than Cortez. Yeah. Mate, Hamilton boys. <laughs> Stacked. And how you find living in Christchurch? It's good, eh? Yeah, real good. I reckon it's real sunny. Oh, it's yeah. Good. yeah like and you're sunny. living with Havili, Yeah, Sione, Teletubi, Havili, John Hurricane. Yeah. How's that? Well, he just got back from Tonga the other day, so oh, he's just yeah. been sleeping all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all good. <laughs> But yeah. you, did you live with him in Tasman as well? Yeah, I've lived with him for the past two years in Tasman, which oh, has yeah. been real cool. And Huey Renton. Yeah, yeah. True, Huey you would have learned a fair bit off him as well, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah, those two are like my two dads almost. Are they? Yeah. What do you like? What is your um, everyday living like? Are you a good cook? Uh, not some, I'm a good eater. Oh, yeah. Not a good cook. Who does the cooking? Not bad cooking, though. Like, just like What's your average. go-to? A chicken chow mein. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You get those chicken chow mein sachets. And oh. Just chicken <laughs> and then, no, like the flavour sachets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. like pre-made. Oh, yeah. And then just stir fry veggies, you know. That's pretty simple. And you can make heaps for the next lunches. Nice. Um, I'm pretty clean, though. Like, I low-key have OCD like around being clean. Tidy house. Or not really the house so much, <laughs> more just like my space. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bit tough. Like your so bedroom like and yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah so you won't go clean the kitchen. Oh, sometimes. Like when I was down in Dunners with Cam and um, Fabian at my flat in Dunedin, I was pretty OCD, like just get annoyed ass. Mm, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we did get heaps of questions from your lots of your friends, actually, and siblings, I think. Uh, first question, who's your training crush or who do you admire at training? Uh, down in Dunners 
I like to watch, obviously, Flown and Smith here. Yeah. Um, Ethan Blackadder. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of good training crushes. Yeah. Okay, next one. Was there any pressure on you by your father or sister coming through? You kind of mentioned that. Yeah, heaps, heaps, heaps. Yeah, yeah if I didn't, if I didn't um, go good, then they'd just roast me to shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next one. What's it like having Taha follow you everywhere? <laughs> He's one of my close mates. He's real good, but we're pretty similar in terms of just everything, I guess. So. Mm. Mate, he's class, though, so, eh? Yeah, top. Yeah, he's he's pretty skillful. Like we played touch and sevens and rugby yeah. all together, which has been main. And you speak about touch. You're keen to play um, New Zealand touch at some point, aren't you? For sure, for sure. I played under sixteens and under eighteens. I was the captain of that under eighteen side, but oh, we yeah. got we got smoked. But True. I was, I was here good though, eh? So good. Crazy. Um, yeah, I would, I'd, I'd, that's what, like one of my goals to go to a World Cup and try to win a World Cup. In touch. Yeah. Touch, and rugby. Rugby and win an Olympics. That's for sevens. True. Sevens or wrestling? Yeah. What? <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven. Yeah. That's kind of my ultimate goal, which is like quite outrageous, but I guess you kind of have to have outrageous goals. Mate, if anyone's going to do it, mm. it's you. Yeah, so so how, when would this, when would you look to do the transition to sevens and then touch? Obviously, touch is no um, financial benefit, <laughs> and so you'd be taking financial deficit. Actually, <laughs> you have to pay like five grand at least to go there. True. Um, yeah, so you'll probably be back into your career. You'll be turning probably down like a million dollars. Yeah, to, I mean, um, some people take a sabbatical to go to Japan. <laughs> I <was> just <laughs> paying my way to pay touch. Is that what you do? Is that what you do to achieve that goal? Uh, maybe like when I was. All through high school, I was like, oh, I want to make touch a professional sport. Like, if it's a professional oh, yeah. sport, I like that's what I'm going to do. True. Yeah. Um, there's so many people that I feel like that, like Mitch Hunt. Um, yeah. Sean Johnson, Caelan Ponga, Ryan Pappenhausen. Like, yeah. There's so many people that start off playing touch. It's just oh, it's such a good game, eh? Yeah, so good, and just like the skills that relates to touch. What oh, stopped it going professional? No, just, Maybe if you make enough coin had, in your career, yeah, you could start up a like. Hasn't league. been anyone smart enough, or I guess hasn't been enough fan base around it. Mm. Yeah, Maybe but well, hopefully you could create that. Yeah, <laughs> like when you're a big gun, Super Rugby All Black, mm. Olympic winner, mate. If you transition to touch, could become professional. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, mate. How good, love that one. Okay, next question: Are you scared of your father-in-law, Jamie Joseph? <laughs> Is he your father-in-law? No, my father-in-law. No. no, he's my girlfriend's dad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, father-in-law yeah, kind well, of. Father-in-law when you're married, married, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But no, nah, he's a top fella. I th- when I first met it, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, when I because when I first went out with my girlfriend, um, my, I was I didn't know I didn't know that was her dad. Like, oh, Because I met her through Touch. We went to um, on New Zealand Touch tours together, mm. and then like saw each other at nationals and um, whatnot. So we met through there, and then everyone like once we started um, going out, everyone was like, "Aren't you scared of your dad? <laughs> Who's your dad?" <laughs> and it turns out it's Jamie Joseph. I was like, "Oh." I uh, don't right. want to meet this fella. <laughs> and, but then met him and he's such a nice fella. Yeah. Has he squared you up at all? No. No, nah, no, nah, he's too nice for that, I yeah. reckon. Unless I did something stupid. No, yeah. he wouldn't do that. But um, has he give, does he give you like advice as a coach to a player or now nah, stays uh, away from it? Yeah, not really. I guess when we talk, it's, yeah, it's not really about rugby, I guess. Yeah. But he's like, he's one of the top cooks I think I've ever met. True. Like, ridiculous. Better than your chow mein. <laughs> Probably just. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. I didn't know that about yeah, the man. Because he's obviously in Japan and the cuisine they have there. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's interesting. Crack up. Okay, next one. This one's a good one. Drop the quad routine. You do have massive quads. <laughs> We've had Bodie on who's given the speed program. Um, Sam Kane gave the neck program. If we get you a quad program, we we can create almost the perfect athlete. You need someone with bigger quads like Sione to do that. Mate, you've got massive quads for a nine. Um, single leg squats, I think. Is the key. Yeah. True. Yeah. When I first went to Tassie, um, I was doing these like, and you like lower down on a single leg, like um, ice. Isometrics. Oh, Isometrics. Yeah. Lower. But it was just for my patellas. Oh, okay. And ankles like, bro, your quads are big enough. Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> I was like, 
what? <laughs> I was like confused there because I, like, I didn't really know Nank, um, Alex Nankovil too much. Yeah. I was like, oh, these are for my patellas. Like, I get real sore patellas. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that. That's the secret. Yeah. How it's worked, whatever it is. Okay. Um, Tips on growing a mo. Oh, uh, I don't know. My brother just. This is just your genes. <laughs> <laughs> my brother grew one down in Dunners and it was just like, oh, it was just like a fat slug. And I was like, oh, bro, cut it, please. Yeah. And then my other brother grew one and I was like, oh, what are you doing? And then, just, yeah, my dad used to have one when he was playing touch. He used to have a fat mullet. Too. True. Yeah. And then, I don't know. That's just the only place. Facial hair grows on me. Mate, looks good. Eh? It's getting thicker <laughs> and darker by the by the minute. I'm just scared to shave it, and like I have a big tan line under there. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Big pasty white <laughs> white mo. <laughs> okay, next one. Ask him about his X Factor audition. X Factor. This is from the big Don Almighty. <laughs> oh, that's not Foster. If you don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Nah, he tries to refer me to um this this dude called Cody Lee. Oh, have yeah. you seen it? Oh, yeah, haven't. If you haven't seen it, look alike. <laughs> is he? Is he look alike? What does no, he sing like? Close. No, hey. I think it's because I yeah singing, but he yeah audition on YouTube. Cody Lee. True. I'll look it up. Okay, next one. Another one from the great lad Noah Foster. Does he purposely try and look like Sid the Sloth from Ice Age? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to smash that. <laughs> It is a little bit, eh? It's, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start that the way people start giving me nicknames. That's how they start, okay. Nah, I've been called um, the dude off. Have you watched Flushed Away before? Oh, He's yeah, like I have, little, yeah. Little, what is he? Little rats. Um, his name's Rat, Rat. Roddy. Oh, Roddy. Uh, you're going to say Roddy too, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah. Roddy. Did you get that one much? Nah. No. Why do you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, next one. Oh, Max Hux is here. Um, what was your first car? <laughs> the car that I, that I drove here, my Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call it the Ferrari. But what is it? It's, it's, a, it's a little sh- um, shit box to be honest. Is <laughs> yeah. Just this little red. It's called Letitia, actually. Mm. Um, a Renault. Do you know what a Renault is? Yeah. Yeah, like one of those French cars. Yeah, oh, I yeah. bought it in Tassie. Yeah. Goes pretty good. Oh, uh, not really. Yeah. But right, just getting out of the driveway revs the time four. Changes gear terribly, but <laughs> humble. Yeah, yeah. It'll uh, be my car for a while, I think. Oh, I like it. Okay, next one. Oh, Cam Miller. Ask him about his performance on the beers in the Gold Coast after New Zealand uh, under twenty <laughs> tournament. Um after our NZ twenties we we just had a couple of beers. Um Went to the pub, yeah, quite a while. <laughs> um, and then there was just like the Aussie boys were then the Argentina boys. Argentina boys, so funny, like so funny. Yeah. And then um, just, yeah, everyone was just shouting beers and whatnot and then just mixed a few too many drinks, <laughs> beers, RTDs and like straights and whatnot. And it was just, yeah. I was all good in the club and then walked out of the club. I was like, oh, I need some fresh air. Just like... Chill, chilly yeah. vibes. Walked outside and I'm just sitting at this bush, like just chilling with the boys. And then next minute, I was just like turned over. I was like, <laughs> and then I don't remember anything after that. <laughs> yeah, I just remember waking up on my because um, we're in like in the rooms up in the hotel and like the tenth floor and whatnot. I just mm. remember waking up on the tent, on the floor in the kitchen, just like spewing all over me. Sure. <laughs> Faves are just like pushing me and like get up you like it's get up I'm about to he, he said this one thing is like I'm going to call the manager I, like, I don't think it well and then as soon as I heard that I was like no no no, no, no. I'm good I'm <laughs> good <laughs> was that after you won it yeah oh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah good times okay next one this one's from speaking of big Fabian ask him about the best memories from 12C Regent Road and his ventures on Castle Street uh, that was our flat down in Dunedin. It was me, Cam, and Fabian. Yeah, it was a real good time. Um, it was just us three flatting together, and it was on Queen Street, which is like where most of the third years go. But oh, we yeah. just wanted to be kind of away from, but away from Castle, but like close enough to walk. So it was like a couple hundred meters down mm-hmm. the road. So had heaps of good times strolling down there. Um, yeah, having a few good nights with them at my flat. Yeah, taking the piss out of each other. Nice. Yeah. Like it. Okay. 
What do you want to do after footy? Uh, heaps of things, I guess. Um, I kind of like taking photos. I like, I've got a f- few film cameras. True. I like doing, yeah, which is... I've never uh, seen you take a photo. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Secret about it. Oh, uh, yeah. Nah, I'm um, just low key. Yeah. Um, but film's pretty expensive. Like you have to pay twenty bucks for a canister of film and then get it <laughs> developed and whatnot. So I'm gonna invest in a digital camera. Twenty uh, bucks, mate. You're, a, you're a, yeah, but you're a full time crusader. You don't get unlimited like, photos. You get like twenty photos. Oh, okay. So that's forty bucks each time you take twenty photos, and then it just ends oh, up. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, ends up. Yeah. Um, I kind of like business stuff. Like mm. I, that kind of interests me. Like. Um, Ice, um, Isaac John, what mm. he does and whatnot, all that type of stuff. Really enjoy, um, make touch professional. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Because you um, you've been studying marketing, eh? Yeah, um, applied science, which is just physical education, but oh, minor true. in marketing. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't really know. I guess there's heaps of stuff that I'll be keen to do after rugby. Mm. But still, still few. Few more years are yeah, away, hopefully. and that goes on to this next one. How do you want to look back on your career in fifteen years? Oh, um, I guess not regretting anything, mm. like just doing my absolute, almost best, like leaving no stone unturned, um, not wishing like I'd gone long or trained more or whatnot. Mm. Um, which is a good thing that my dad probably installed in me. I was watching Instagram, like, I always, like, scroll through reels and the thing that Michael Jordan said, it was, like, your competition's not against um, the other people you're versing, but against your capabilities. Oh. Are you fun, eh? I like that. Yeah, so, and um, my sister got me the thing which says my only competition is who I was yesterday. Wow. kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, so just trying to be the best me, I guess, um, on the field and off the field. Um, yeah, so trying to see how far I can climb up the mountain. Mm-hmm. Small steps at a time. Mate, exciting stuff though. Okay, last question. Ask everyone this and might be a little bit to do about that because that was good advice. But um, what's the best piece of advice you have for a Waterlad lad listener? Ooh, best piece of advice. One would be um, ask questions, I guess. Like mm-hmm. when I was leaving school, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, who's someone that's played rugby, gone to uni or like done something along those lines that I wanted to do. So my brother was good mates with Duplessy Creefy. Oh, yeah. Well, I think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was just like, oh, he's good mates. Like, surely I'll just message him and he'll just tell me. So that was that was real cool. Like, so you messaged him? Yeah, I just messaged him on Instagram, like not thinking of it. I was like, oh, like, do you have any advice out of school? And he just sent me like all this stuff, like, yeah, just like, pick what you want and like, I went to uni I did all the stuff I think which is like real sure. cool like he's a professional rugby player I was just like year 13 at school um, so what a lad yeah top lad mm. um, I guess the worst thing you can um, someone can say to you is like no mm. or go away so yeah you may as well just ask like that um, and you've got another one jeez <laughs> another one <laughs> did a you? good one yeah. um, that was good um don't wash your linen clothes with um, other clothes. Like what? with the washing machine? Yeah. That's good advice, yeah. What happens? Just ruins your clothes out, your linen clothes. Does yeah. it? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so just make sure you know how to do your washing properly because yeah. that's a, it can really ruin your closet. I didn't even know that. That's well, probably. You don't do your washing, so do you? <laughs> <laughs> your missus does Mate, your washing. That's probably, like I've had a lot of advice, but that's probably the first time I've Genuinely learn something. Thanks. Yeah, see? That's why was, it, took, it took a while to think. Now I just need your chicken chow mein recipe and I'm away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How good. Oh, oh, how good. What a bloody good podcast. Um, absolute honour getting you on. Um, no, it's been a pleasure working with you over the last couple of years. Excited for what's ahead for you, especially this year, but not just this year, in the future, and seeing you play for the All Blacks and... Um, make touch professional and go to the Olympics. Uh, it's going to be, there's plenty to follow. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to following and see what's ahead for you. And appreciate you coming on. What a lad. Cheers, Jimmy. Appreciate it. It's been yeah. fun. You're a lad. <laughs>